not as always. As well as always for the last two years. It's so good morning. We, we recognize there are a bunch of visitors on the call this morning, and you are always welcome. As we uh, begin this morning, we remind everyone that whoever you are and wherever you come from and or Zoom from, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Just a few quick <laughs> announcements, and then we'll get started with this morning. Um, Holy Week. Two weeks away, believe it or not. What? Uh, I know. Thursday and Friday, uh, both Monday Thursday and Good Friday, will be at 7 o'clock. Uh, Monday Thursday will be a remote Zoom service. And Good Friday will actually be a walk from the church up to where the cross will be. Um, we have some pretty cool things planned, a little outside of our normal, but hoping to be as close to our normal as we possibly can be still during this time of pandemic. Um, but uh, Jim Tomlinson actually had a really, really cool idea for uh, Good Friday that we're going we're gonna to do. And so I don't want to ruin the surprise. Show up and, and participate, and we'll have a great time. Uh, and then Easter Sunday, 6 a.m., sunrise service at the cross, followed by a 9 a.m. Zoom service if you are not an early riser. A um, couple things from our um, reaching out deacon, Jenny George. The first is we are acutely aware that checks are coming from the government for various folks, and, and another round of those checks started to arrive on Friday. And we also are aware that many in our congregation have expressed that they don't need that check and they'd like to know where that check can go um, to help others in the community. Um, so in the EDCC this week, we highlighted the Catamount Women Aid program, which is a program that benefits men and women in the uh, greater Deerfield area. Um, and you are certainly able to redirect your check there by writing a check to the Catamount Women Aid. If you need more information on how to do that, you can contact Jenny George, our new Reaching Out Deacon. And um, next week, another organization will get highlighted. And we're going to do that for the next month or so um, so that you can see what organizations in the area could benefit from that check. And also, if you are someone who is in need of a vaccine and you don't know how to get to your vaccination, please contact Jenny. She will set you up with a ride, even if it's putting put you in an Uber, but we will get you to your vaccine. So please uh, pass that on to others around you in the community. Don't just limit that to us here in the Deerfield Community Church. Lisa. We want to say a word of welcome this morning. Is my mic on? Yep. Yay. Um, we want to say a word of welcome to our experiment this morning. We have a grand experiment running in the sanctuary. We did not have the heart or the spirit to uh, have worship and to confirm our, our uh, youth with them not here. So this is the first experiment of having people in the sanctuary. And an experiment it really is. Everybody wave. Tim has got you on the screen. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, we're all well distanced and masked. And uh, we'll be looking forward to the regathering team talking about what this means and what eventually it will mean for the congregation as, as you go forward. Finally, I want to say a quick word of thanks and ask for a round of applause to the best tech team in any church, anywhere, on the day of the most moving parts of the service. That is, Lisa created the most complicated service she could possibly create. Yay, Lisa. And, and uh, Suzanne and Emily and Tim and Andy and actually all the confirmands as well are all looking at the most complicated scripts you can imagine. So everybody say, woo! <laughs> Especially to Suzanne and Emily and Tim, our tech team. And just one final housekeeping for those that are new with us today. Um, when it's appropriate to unmute your microphones and participate, we will invite you to do so. But otherwise, please do keep your mic muted. Even during singing, it's, it's easier to sing at home where your mic is muted rather than having all the delay that happens. So we'll, we'll invite you to unmute when, when it's time to do so. And then the final, final 30, 20 minutes after the, the finish of this service, or at 10.30, whichever comes later, 
Uh, please be at the Old Town Hall across the street from the church, and we will have a parade to congratulate not only our confirmands, but bid a farewell to our beloved Pastor Lisa. Deep breath. <sighs> so each of us is a precious and holy vessel of love. While we have been through a time of deep challenge in the past year, we now find ourselves moving closer to a season of recovery and hope. And today we celebrate the presence and guidance of God's Spirit and the love of God we share at DCC. Just like the artists who work with pieces of stained glass or mosaics, we are always taking the pieces of our lives, rearranging them and putting them together in new and different ways to make meaning and sense out of our day-to-day -day experiences. It is by the grace of God and with the support of others that we create new patterns, new rhythms, and new beauty, bringing bits and pieces into wholeness and sharing healing, hope, and joy. And as we sing our Lenten theme song this morning, for those in the sanctuary, if you would just hum quietly, that would be terrific, because we can't all sing, that would be dangerous this morning. So, Andy? As we gather together on Zoom and together here, we invite you, if you have a candle at home, to light the candle as we all welcome the light of Christ together. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, and renew our holy vessels by seeking God's blessings in prayer. God of all possibilities made in your image, you have invited us to be co-creators of a better world. You bestow imagination and the ability to learn and progress. You offer us strength, healing, and wholeness to create with you. Sometimes we are fired up in your name other times we are tired. Be with us in all moments and phases of our lives. Forgive us when we flounder or fail. Help us to move forward in renewed hope and love. And hear us when we pray. That's not that, yeah. It's not that. I don't have a script. Help us, healer. Show us <laughs> our creative energies. Forgive, Forgive our cynicism. <laughs> Move, move us to move, move one step at a time, time toward, toward greater, greater care, care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness.
Again, this week, I invite you to imagine and identify that warm orb of light deep within you. This is God's light and love that lives in each of us. Allow yourself to feel the warmth and see the glow growing as it sparks inspiration and ignites creativity in you and others. Know this, we are all gifted with the power to create newness and help with healing. No matter what, none of us is alone. Together we can and do magnify light, hope, and love for you, for all. Take a deep breath to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. I invite you to imagine the warmth that fills and surrounds you, flowing out to those who may be close to you in physical proximity or in love and faith, imagine the warmth and light extending beyond your inner circle to the neighborhood, to the church, to the wider community. See it spread like a rising sun and let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Amen. And if you've not already done so, I invite you to open your eyes and you can unmute your microphones and please share in our response of peace. The peace, peace of peace Christ, Christ is with, with, you. with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Now would you join me again muted for our opening hymn. Now in the days of youth, we're going to sing verses one and three. Now in the days of youth, when life is filled with choice, when hope and doubt touch every hour, when our thoughts find a voice, we turn, O oh God, to you for guidance and for grace. In all our days, in all our ways, help us to seek your face. Teach us to love in truth, to give and to receive. With joyful and with open hearts, in all that believe, to seek another's word, to honor what is right, to let our will and our desire be held in holy light. It has been a true privilege to get to know the 11 young women who have been part of our confirmation class. And now it is our privilege to and honor to present to you the nine who are completing the program. They have attended and Zoomed to group gatherings. They have studied and read portions of the Bible they taught each other about something that Lisa calls big picture stories. And if you want to know what that is, ask them. <clears throat> they have learned about church history and reflected and discussed and changed their hearts and minds and spent time with an adult mentor who offered support and insight. As these mentors shared stories and time with the youth, they got to know the student that they were working with, their confirmand. So it is fitting that the mentors be the ones to briefly introduce their confirmands to you. Okay. Yeah. 
Here's where the tech magic happens. Here we have Susan Fisher Fusco. Introducing Herman. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Great. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl down the street from me. She had long dark hair and with one look at her beautiful smiling face and those big brown eyes, I fell in love. The years have quickly passed and the little girl is now almost 16, a sophomore in high school and taking driver's ed. And in the wink of an eye, she'll be off to college studying to be a marine biologist or maybe an orthopedic surgeon. Even though she and I have lost touch now and again over the years, she has never lost touch with God and her faith. She still prays each night ever since she can remember and says that she knows that God is listening, which gives her comfort. I was touched and honored that she asked me to be her mentor during her confirmation journey at DCC. I just wanna say thank you to her and know that I am here for you. I wish you an amazing spiritual journey as you continue to explore not only the Christian faith, but others that interest you like Buddhism and Hinduism. I know you will approach this journey with an open and loving heart, knowing that God is by your side every step of the way. So now without further ado, but a little fanfare, <laughs> may I introduce Cassidy Garno. Thank you, Susan. Next, we have Jason reading words sent to us by Holly Tomlinson. Some of you know her as Christabel. <laughs> I'm happy to share words of introduction for Elena George, written by her mentor, Holly Tomlinson. As many of you know, Holly is a pastor and not able to be with us today. She wrote, I have known Elena George, or Lainey as I call her, since she was a very little girl. It is an honor to be a part of her life and her family. I admire Lainey for making the decision she has made regarding confirmation. Some people come to faith easily, others may wrestle with it for a lifetime. My prayer for you, dear Lainey, is that you may leave the door open to God and may you keep being your bright, curious, and authentic self. Thank you, Jason, and thank you, Holly. Next, we move to Maggie Schrock, who will introduce Emily. Emily Griffin, daughter of Tim and Sandy Griffin, big sister to Kaylee, is a bright, positive, thoughtful, and creative young woman. She has been a smiling face and a humble helper in this church, as you can see, <laughs> since she was very, very small. And many of you have watched her grow into the beautiful young woman that she is today. I'm sure that many of you can think of a time where you have seen Emily being a bright, positive light in your life. It's an exciting day that Emily has come to the decision to confirm her faith in front of all of you and confidently say that she wants to follow Christ and serve this church and this community further. We're very proud of you, Emily. Thank you, Maggie. We move next to Claudia Rocha, who will introduce Allison Hurley. Can you find Claudia? There she is. There she is. Bottom left. There we go. Claudia, you're on. So I was very honored when Allison asked me to be her mentor. Allison's a strong and amazing young lady. She has a great sense of humor. What I love about Allison is she's supportive, loving, and kind to family and friends. 
Allison's greatest strength that I believe is that she knows what matters and I'm extremely proud of her today. And I want to know that I think she's an amazing young lady. Best of luck, Allison. Thank you, Gloria. You have to stand with, Tim, so, with them so that Tim can get you both in the screen. There we go. Jenny George. Ooh, this is fun. So I get to introduce Jillian Hurley, who I have had the pleasure and honor of knowing basically since I've been at this church. And I got to know her better when we were in youth group together. And what I know about Jillian is she is highly intelligent, very kind, and very thoughtful in all of her decisions. I think it is wonderful that she is going into cosmetology because she sees the beauty in others and she will help them to see the beauty in themselves. And she has my support in her decision and I have no doubt that as she moves forward in her life, she will continue to grow in every way that she can. And I couldn't be more honored that she asked me to be her mentor. So thank you, Jillian. Now we go to um, the recording of Ann Schwartz, who's introducing Josie Lyon. It was such an honor to serve as Josie's mentor during her confirmation instructions. Although we were limited by the pandemic from spending more personal time together, we managed to converse via Zoom and have a couple of outdoor visits. Josie did not take her instructions or decision to be confirmed lightly. Having attended appropriate school, I never thought there was a choice, nor did anyone ever ask me how I felt about my faith. I'm so proud of the way Josie expressed her feelings and the effort she put into the assignments despite her busy life. Besides keeping up with schoolwork and violin practice, she tends to the horses, Rocky and Bella, the goats and the chickens. An unfortunate accident on the ski slope put a pause to her independence but there was no reason for anyone to say no to her request. She is a passionate young woman and dedicated to her family and friends and concerned about people she doesn't even know. She expressed many times how much she loves our church and we are all so blessed by her presence and especially when she shares her talent of singing and playing the violin to enhance our service. I look forward to seeing God's plans for Josie and pray that her path is always safe. Very proud of you. Ann recorded that a couple of days ago for us so that she could be with us even though she couldn't be with us. Now we move to Amy Lockwood, who uh, was Lily Lyon's mentor. Hi, Lily. Um, I am really honored to be uh, able to be part of Lily's journey over the last year and part of introducing her this morning. Um, I've come to know her as a truly wise and reflective person, which I think is part of her nature and will continue to be as she grows in the church. Lily craves perspective and information, but she also has that overlaid with genuine kindness and curiosity about other people. I, Lily, I hope that you continue to build on your confidence in your wanting to understand things because it's something people admire and want to be part of um, with you. Uh, this morning, um, Josie in the responsive reading used the phrase co-creator of a better world. And I whipped out my notes and I wrote that down because I think um, our congregation is really lucky that Lily considered all of her questions and decided to join us to become co-creators of this better world together. So thank you, Lily, for letting me get to know you. And uh, I'm glad we'll get to keep working together. Thank you, Amy. Now we go back to Claudia, who has the unique distinction of being the only person who was the mentor to two of our confirmants. Claudia is gonna introduce Bella Martin. Claudia, we can't hear you. You're muted. 
Did we mute her or is oh. how's that? There you Great. go. Thank okay. You. My dear Bella Martin, my neighbor, my friend. It's always wonderful to see you so unexpectedly, a great joy. Bella is a shy and sweet young lady. She has an extremely creative mind. She's devoted to her family and her friends and her animals. Her sensitivity towards others, I must say, is unique and strong. I see her growing each day, and I know that she will continue to blossom through life. Best of luck, Bella. Thank you, Claudia. And finally, we go to Nancy Brown McKinney, who will introduce our ninth and final confirmand, Merrick. Nancy. You're muted. First, I would like to say happy birthday, Merrick, on the 29th. And happy anniversary to Nate and Emily. Uh, I'm sorry, on the 22nd. And happy anniversary to your parents on the 29th. What a joy it has been for me to be Merrick Oxnard's mentor. I felt we were a match because we both felt the same way about many things. From being spiritual as we looked at the world to the love of nature and animals. I You muted yourself somehow, Nancy. <laughs> we got to love of animals. <laughs> there you go. Love of animals. I truly hope our church community will get to see her big picture story. I know you will be impressed as I was. Her computer presentation was talented and really showed why she has decided to be confirmed. I made a little uh, card for you, Merrick, and it's thanks to Susan Fisher Fusco on the front and back, picture of our church. If you open it up, it says, you have grown up in many wonderful ways. from goofy faces to sweet smiles. You always look thankful for the family that you have and taking each, in, each adventure to greater heights. Congratulations, Merrick on your decision to be confirmed at the Deerfield Community Church on March 14th, 2021. Thank you for asking me to be a part of your spiritual journey. And that is the back of the card. Merrick, I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for making me a part of your decision to be confirmed. Thank you, Nancy. Now you know why we have these wonderful ch uh, children. They aren't children anymore. Young women who are participating in the service this morning. Two of them are about to move up to read the psalm for this morning. Your mic is over there. And so I'm going to send you to that mic over there. A dozen verses from Psalm 68 remind us this morning, not only of God's help and healing, but also of God's constant support and presence in our lives. And as many of the Psalms do, after remembering these truths about God's love and presence, the Psalm concludes in thanksgiving and with singing God's praise. Bless God, all you people. Let the sound of our praise for God be heard. For God has set us up on the road of life. 
and God has kept us among the living. You have challenged us, O God. You refine us like silver. When we found ourselves in difficulty, you brought us out to a spacious place filled with abundance. Now we come to your house with gifts of thanksgiving. We present ourselves just as we promised when we were in trouble. Come now and hear all, all you who love God. Hear us share the stories of all that God has done for us. We cried aloud and God heard our prayer. God listens when we call and, he, and heeds the song of our hearts. So let us sing out, on, out our joy to the God who loves us. Blessed be God whose steadfast love remains forever. Thank you both. Throughout Lent, we are including a contemporary word in our readings. This week, our word comes from the Nobel Peace Prize winner of 1952. It's kind of contemporary. His name was Albert Schweitzer. Schweitzer began organ and piano at, early, at an early age and became a renowned worldwide performer in adulthood. At 18, he entered university studying theology earning a doctorate and ordination as a Lutheran pastor, but that was not enough for him. He wanted to alleviate suffering. He studied medicine and became a doctor at age 38. Together with his wife, who was a nurse, he went on to go down to the country of Gabon on the west coast of Central Africa, where they built and ran a hospital. His humanitarian efforts became an example to others, uh, and he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Reading words from Albert Schweitzer, we have Allison this morning. The expression reverence for, li for life is the key to Albert, Albert uh, Schweitzer's personal philosophy. He believed that no person must ever harm or destroy life unless absolutely necessary. This attitude permitted everything he did. He wrote these words that are part of today's message and theme. The path of awakening is not about becoming who you are. Rather, it is about unbecoming who you are and who you are not. Thank you, Allison. I love that. The path of awakening is not about becoming who you are. Rather, it is about becoming who you are not. There's about eight sermons there, none of which I will share with you today. <laughs> Our final word from scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark in the Christian Testament. All throughout Lent, we've been hearing stories of Jesus healing folks in need. Today is no different in that regard. As we hear the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. A large crowd followed Jesus and pressed in on him. Slow down. Slow down. Now, there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, yet she was no better, rather getting worse. She had heard about Jesus. She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, thinking, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware of that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you see, say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had touched him. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, knelt down before Jesus, and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Thank you, Emily. I chose this story especially for today. I chose it because we've been doing healing stories of Jesus, but I chose it especially because of that last line and our confirmation class. I have taught many confirmation classes in my career. I've never had a group of all young women before. When we started 
uh, there were 10. We went up to 11, and we have nine completing the program today. All girls, all daughters. And so when I read these words, daughter, your faith has made you well, whole, healed you, go in peace. I thought of these young women. I thought about the fact that they are all daughters. And I thought about the fact that they've been exploring their faith and discovering what it means to them and what it means they can do in the world. Some of them will go forward and do things that we cannot dream of today. I expect that we will have uh, beauty in the world beyond what we currently understand, that we will have science in the world that is groundbreaking, that we will have everything in between from these young women, and that we will wonder in the future that they have gone in peace, but also that they have gone so far. Each of them has made an effort during this time to do what we're talking about in today's acting in faith as well. They have pieced together their identities and their understandings of themselves and their world. Now, many of you who've been with us know that we've been playing with glass pieces this, this Lenten season. And lots of you have glass pieces at home that you've been playing with as we went along. I was here earlier in the week, and I came into the sanctuary and I took nine of these pieces of glass, and I played with them. I put them down here on this table to see how many different designs I could make, as if I was creating my own mosaic. It felt a lot like what we do when we're understanding ourselves and creating who we are and who we are not. So I think of each of these young ladies as doing that work. And that is the wonder of confirmation and the wonder of growing up in the world. It's also the wonder that Jesus calls us to because as we put ourselves together, as we create ourselves and our pictures of the world in different ways, day by day and year by year in our lives, we make meaning, we understand anew, and we are healed and we are whole in new ways. This is the piece together, put it together. I'm broken, but I'm mending. I don't know what to make of myself, but I can make something that we encourage in all of God's people. So today, at some point, those of you who are at home and who have pieces of glass, I want to invite you to collect them and in your ritual this week to take those pieces of glass and play with them. Play with your pieces of glass and see what kinds of patterns you can make. See what gives you joy. See what gives you an idea about something else. See what sparks your creativity. See what you make of your bits and pieces to make the picture of your wholeness and your healing. That's what we do in life as we go by day by day. Keep your mosaic, if you have one, in a place where you can see it regularly this week. And don't forget that you can play with it every day. 
if you want. And remember that God's blessing and God's spirit will be with you as you play and with all of us as we create our own understandings of our identities and our understandings of the world. I want to invite all of you at this time to join as we sing into prayer, singing Take, Oh Take. And the guys didn't know I was coming to it this soon, so <laughs> give them a second. Surprise, <clears throat> we're here. <clears throat> Let's join in Take, Oh Take. As I am broken, weary I may be. Touch me with your healing love and treasure me. See, oh, see this world of me. us whole and bring us peace. Healer of our every ill, especially of our weary and exhausted spirits. Your mic's not on. Of course it's not. <laughs> Healer of our every ill, especially our weary or exhausted spirits. We come before you to make our petitions known this day. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the challenges and griefs of our time. You remind us, O oh God, that we are filled with your creative spark, and you invite us to be co-creators with you. You ask that we play with our understandings, that we see how things fit together, and that we see how to make meaning of our lives. We give thanks that when we orient ourselves toward your spirit, asking you to accompany us, touch us, and inspire us, you come. You are present and you offer us healing and hope. This day, God, we offer our prayers for those whom we know and love and for those whom we do not know, hear us as we pray. Receive our petitions. We invite you to unmute and join in our community prayer by lifting up names or situations. John. Pam and Emma. Penny. Connie. Connie and Alyssa. For the Moran family on the death of Jack. Uh, Mr. Patsy. Continued prayers for Brian. Poppy. Fred and Mary. The Roberge family on the loss of their son, Jordan. Meredith. Connor. Billy and Sonia. My cousin John. Lauren. Alex. 
<laughs> Josh Winslow and Wendy. The people of Myanmar, another place is where there is strife and warfare. We're all across the world that are bringing vaccines. Go in. My brother. Oh God, receive now all our prayers and hold them in your heart. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray as one voice, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes a person's mind goes elsewhere during the prayer. I was thinking about the fact that confirmation is one of those days when we um, experience the Holy Spirit and when we celebrate the arrival of the Spirit. And I wanted to tell you um, that we have a theme piece for that. Uh, this week, as we were playing with our pieces of glass, our friend Jackie, the artist, um, and Suzanne, I don't know if how close you can zoom on this. Tim, maybe preset 11. And you can see that this week, um, Jackie took pieces of glass and played with them and made a dove, the symbol for the Holy Spirit. And we set it in the field of broken glass as if it was part of a grand mosaic. This reminds us, friends, that we are always making new pictures and that God's spirit is always in the midst of that, just as God's spirit is here with us today in confirmation. As a rite and passage and coming of age, confirmation serves to mark a point in which our children are empowered to discern for themselves where they are on their faith journeys. They have lived and learned much about the Christian faith by the time they reach this stage. They learn from their families, from their church experiences, and from their lives. In our program, we have tried to encourage the confirmants to open their hearts to the love that surrounds them. <clears throat> we have also opened their minds to ideas of spirituality and religion. We've studied Bible and history and talked about what it means to understand oneself more deeply and to make decisions for oneself about faith. Through personal effort and with the guidance of the spirit, we have come to this day. Three of our youth are completing the confirmation program and have made the decision not to confirm their Christian faith at this time. As people who respect the free will that God has given us and as persons who have the right to discern our own paths individually, we support these three with love and enthusiasm. I have always said if I didn't have at least one student in my confirmation class who decided not to be confirmed, I was doing something wrong. So I'm very proud of these three. And one of these three has graciously agreed to share with us this morning. All three of them wrote statements which came to you with the bulletin. And Elena George will share the statement that she has written 
describing her journey and where she finds herself in life. So I have decided not to confirm my faith. The reason I have chosen to do this is because I just do not feel any spiritual connection to God at this time. And while others may feel a true connection to God, I just have never felt that. And while I understand the stories in the Bible, to me they just don't add up with everything we've learned in science. And while I am no way criticizing those who believe in God in the Bible, it just isn't right for me. I believe that I am not ready to make a decision that would affect the rest of my life while 14. I have many more perspectives to explore and I'm not ready to settle on just one thing. Whatever I choose to do with myself spiritually, I will always remember the amazing congregation who was a large part of my childhood. In conclusion, I will not be confirming my faith or becoming a member of this church, I w but I wish everyone who is here today a wonderful religious journey. And you can stay right there. Stay right there. You were prepared for this part. You just didn't know you were prepared for this part. I'm going to invite Jillian and Allison Hurley to come forward at this time along with their mom. Um, and I'm going to invite Jenny to come up and to stand with your children. Each and all of these young women are amazing and beloved in this congregation. So we affirm and bless them, each and all, as they continue on their journeys of life. This is the part they don't know is gonna happen, and um, they're gonna hate this, but they're gonna hate it along with everybody else, so here we go. Put your hand on her other shoulder, would you, Mom? <clears throat> Allison. May you always know that you are treasured and loved. May goodness and blessings be abundant in your life. And may you find hope and joy all along your way. Amen. Jillian, it's the same thing. May you always know that you are treasured and loved. May kindness and goodness and blessing be abundant in your life, and may you find hope and joy all along your way. Amen. You all can be seated. Hi. It's not so bad, huh? <laughs> Elena, may you always know that you are treasured and loved. May goodness and blessing be abundant in your life, and may you find hope and joy all along your way. Amen. And let all the people say, Amen. Amen. We're singing again. Let us join in singing a response. I was there to hear your morning cry. Let's do, let's do verses one and two, okay. unless you want to do all four. No, one, two, and three. One, two, and three, then. One, two, and three. All right. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. I'll be there in case you wander off and find where demons dwell. When you found the wonder of the world, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living God, to whom you now belong. As we 
ran out of words on the slide, so I guess that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Our six remaining confirmants have all heard God's call in their own ways. They are choosing to confirm their faith this morning. And we give thanks to two of them who volunteered to read the statements of faith which they wrote. Lily, you're first. I have decided to confirm my faith and to become a member of DCC. I believe that Jesus was a wise and kind person who was dedicated to God and teaching about her. I feel God when the wind blows or when there's a pretty sunset, which feels like a way of reminding me that she's there if I need her and has been watching over me. My reason to confirm my faith is to keep learning about faith, and my reason to become a member of DCC is to learn about faith with this community. Thank you, Lily. And Mirik. I am choosing to confirm my faith, and I would like to become a member of DCC. As an almost 14-year-old, these are my beliefs right now, but I accept that these views are not fixed. My faith will change and evolve as I gain new understandings, and I will strive to always have an open, loving mind. I believe that God is a force of love who is present in everyone, everywhere, regardless of their religion, race, culture, sex, gender, or anything that makes a person unique or different. I believe that if we are all made in his image, then nobody can, made, can be made wrong or uninvited to the table. I believe that Jesus is an incarnation of God's love who came to teach about loving your neighbor. Because God's love can't be defeated, Jesus' crucifixion couldn't hold him back from teaching the world how to love. I believe that the Bible was inspired by God and is a good place to look for guidance. However, I don't believe that the Bible is law or must be taken literally. It was written 2,000 years ago, and while it is still relevant and has wonderful teachings inside, we live in a new changing age where some old traditions and beliefs can be challenged. Lastly, I believe that half of being a Christian is praying and going to church and learning about being what a Christian means. But the other half, I think, is taking what you've learned and living it. Just going to church doesn't make you a good Christian. You have to love your neighbors as yourself and turn the other cheek and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I will strive to be that person, the kind person who lives as Jesus would. Thank you, Merrick and Lily. I'd like to invite you six who are confirming your faith this morning to move now to your designated spot in the front of the sanctuary. Each of you has made a set of decisions that brings you to this time of confirming your faith. You have searched your beliefs, your values, and your priorities, and now you come to publicly declare that you are committed to a personal spiritual journey Right here. And to the Christian faith. Let's take them a little this way. <sighs> Mike. We now ask you this, these questions. Don't look at your scripts because you won't find it there, really. Just look at me. <clears throat> Are you prepared to affirm your baptism? and enter into the faith and family of God's beloved children? If so, please say, I am. Having begun a journey of faith exploration, having heard the good news of God's love proclaimed by Jesus Christ, having studied the stories of both the Hebrew and Christian Bibles and shared with your classmates and mentors, do you now declare that you are open to continuing this journey of exploration and faith? If so, please say, I am with the help of God. Do you promise by the grace of God to try to live by the principles that Jesus taught, to show love and justice, and to share the goodness and love of God as best you are able. 
If so, please say, I promise, with the help of God. Will the parents of these confirmands please uh, stand if you are on Zoom or come forward if you are present and stand with and behind your children. I gotta get out of the way for a picture. <laughs> Got it, Suzanne? <clears throat> you, parents, have nurtured these children in many ways. On this day, when they make their own affirmation of faith, I ask you, do you now covenant with your daughters offering them your love and support as they begin a new phase of their lives as confirmed persons in Christian faith? If so, please say, we do. We do. Will any grandparents or godparents, siblings, or other family who are with us via Zoom please stand where you are? You have also supported and cared for these young women in many ways. You are an important part of their lives. Do you now promise them your encouragement and your love as they begin this new phase of their lives of faith? If so, please say, we do. We, we do. do. And will the congregation join me in our promise of support? As we turn to the congregation's promise, will the parents who are here in the sanctuary? We're already oh, here. Sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Do you welcome these fine young people into the family of faith? Will you promise to respect them for who they are and support them in their lives and their faith journeys? Will you expect and pray that each of them will continue to grow in their God-given potential? And will you rejoice with them? If so, please say, we do and we will. We do, we do. We do. We do. and we will. Let us pray. Almighty God, who in baptism received these persons into the love of the church, now increase in them the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Nurture, support, and bless them in this time of confirmation with your grace and love. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before, only we're going to do it more times. Okay? You all there in Zoom land? Mm -hmm. Rest, relax, and pray. Uh, which, who wants to go first? I think I was gonna do Lily first because she's younger and she always goes last. Peter, you wanna get a hand on, on this one somehow? There you go. <sighs> Lily. May God's blessings be upon you. May the gifts of faith be abundant in your life. May God's love for you be a true strength. And may your love for others and for all God's creation give you hope and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Chelsea, may God's blessings be upon you. May the gifts of your faith be abundant in your life. May God's love for you be a true strength. And may your love for others and for all of God's creation give you hope and joy in Jesus' name. Amen. That's twice in a week. Thank 
you, Tim. I'm just trying to use the same hand. So everybody put a hand on her shoulder or something. Oh, dear. Cassidy, may God's blessings be upon you. May the gifts of faith be abundant in your life. May God's love for you be a true strength. And may your love for others and for all God's creation give you hope and joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Oh, no, you have to be in there. Merrick, step forward a little bit. There you go. Now get in there. Go, 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 go. She's, a little, she's your little girl. Grown. Merrick, may God's blessings be upon you. May the gifts of faith be abundant in your life. May God's love for you be a true strength. And may your love for others and for all God's creation give you hope and joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man, are my hands sticky. All right. So she can step behind. Nothing bad will happen, I promise. I get to do it in person today. Bella, may God's blessings be upon you. May the gifts of faith be abundant in your life. May God's love for you be a true strength. And may your love for others and for all of God's creation give you hope and joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Emily, step forward so your dad can get behind you. There we go. Emily, may God's blessing be upon you. May the gifts of faith be abundant in your life. May God's love for you be a true strength. And may your love for others and for all God's creation give you hope and joy in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the whole congregation say, Amen. Amen. Okay. I forgot these things. Okay. Um, so, Bella and Cassidy and families, you all can be seated. I got more torture for the rest of these folks. Just a little. <sighs> these four remaining young women have also decided to join the church and become covenanted members among and with us. So I ask you for this question. Today you have confirmed your faith and been blessed by the church through the power of the Holy Spirit. You four have also indicated your desire to join in membership with this church. Do you now promise to be a faithful member of the Deerfield Community Church, United Church of Christ, sharing in the responsibilities and rights of membership, praying with and for the church, and joining in its mission and ministries as you are able in the name of Jesus. If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. And to the congregation, both on Zoom and here in our sanctuary, will all who are covenanted members of Deerfield Community Church join in the words on the screen or in your bulletin. Caught you, Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne was still up taking pictures. <laughs> Emily's up front. Oh, again. and Emily's up front. <laughs> I'm sorry. Suzanne, be Emily for a second, would you? <laughs> there we go. All right. Please join me. We welcome, we welcome you, you to the joy of the life of the life of the church. We, we, we promise you our friendship and we share the hopes and the labors of the church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
May we continue to grow together, together, together. Uh, knowledge, 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 and love, love. and be witnesses, 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 and be now you all know what the Tower of Babel sounded like, right? Um, dear friends, let us join in singing our song of hope forward through the ages. Yeah, really, we will sing um, just verse one and two. Okay. Just verses one and two. Let's give Emily a second to get back there. <clears throat> Oh, a lot's been Forward done. through the ages in unbroken line, move the faithful spirits at the call divine, gifts in differing measures, parts of one are gold, manifold in service on. Ages in unbroken line. Yes. Okay. Okay. would be an extra long service and it is but there's just a little more a little little more i didn't realize that cindy there's more until we end that's how we much promise. more there'll be um when a pastor leaves there's always a litany of farewell and uh saying farewell to an interim is really no different than saying farewell to our settled pastor it is emotional, it is sad, and we are happy also So, uh, for the new chapters in both of our lives. Our church is constantly changing. New friends and members join us while others move away. Babies come into our families, children grow into youth, Adults experience many life phases, and loved ones come to the end of their lives. The Spirit of God inspires and calls us to new visions for ministry and mission, and we follow. As our church changes, it is important and right that we recognize all these times of passages. Today, we conclude our partnership in ministry with the Reverend Lisa Stebman, whose time as our interim pastor has come to its conclusion. As congregation and interim pastor, we bid one another farewell. I thank this church, its members and friends, for the love, kindness, and support shown to me in these last two years. I thank you for the ways that you have accepted my leadership and joined me in the work of the church and the ministry of Jesus Christ. I'm deeply grateful for you allowing me to be all of who I am and for your understanding and forgiveness when I made mistakes or let you down. 
I especially rejoice in the many things we have accomplished together and the bonds of faith and love that we have shared. Would the congregation please join me? Lisa, Lisa. we receive, receive your thanksgiving, thanksgiving, thanksgiving and appreciation. We, we do, do the 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 time 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 together. together. We, we thank, thank you for your leadership and hard work, and hard work for the spirit of hope that you have shared. You have shared. And, and for your care and love, celebrate all our achievements, all our achievements together, together in this interim, interim period. period. And, and we, we promise to honor our work and be committing ourselves to the church, the church, and its future. Yeah. I receive your gratitude. Dear friends, your gratitude and celebrate your commitment to the future. Wow. Trusting so that we are and will continue to be blessed <laughs> by the God who loves and guides us. Do you, the members and friends of the Deerfield Community Church, <laughs> United Church of Christ, now release Reverend Lisa Stedman from the duties and responsibilities of interim pastor. We, we do, do with, with the, the help, help of God. God. Do you, Lisa, now release this church from turning to you and depending upon you as our interim pastor? Do you promise to encourage and pray for our continued ministry here and to maintain appropriate professional boundaries while continuing to rejoice in the love we share? I do with the help of God. Let us pray. Oh God, your oh love is trustworthy and a source of strength and courage for all, for all our people. people. We, we, we give you thanks, you thanks for your presence, presence and support. And support. Help, Help us, us trust in you, as we look to, we look look to the future look with excitement. excitement. Bless, us, bless, us, bless us as, as we move into, into that future, future preparing, 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 preparing memories of this time together. Time together. together. Increase our faith, increase increase our faith, faith, our faith and guide us that, that we may embrace day with hope. With hope. Empower us to strive for the coming of justice peace and, and love and love for all people. For all people. Send us send forth, send forth, us forth in joy, joy in, in Jesus' Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, one and all. My script ends now. Your, <laughs> your script ends. And uh, so almost every week or every other week, Lisa would say to us, this is my favorite scripture. <laughs> well, Guilty. How many favorites can you have? <laughs> well, anything between this front and this back. Yeah. And uh, so I wanted to honor the fact that she has so many favorite scriptures. And I'm not terribly uh, poetic or literary or... So I turned to a good friend of ours, Marin Terabasi. And between Marin and I, we did oh, an no. improv of Ecclesiastics 3, 1-8. For everything, there is a ministry, and there are so many different seasons. <laughs> like this one in the time of the pandemic. But time and time again, you find your purpose. There is a time to pray a newborn blessing, even a Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, in maternity ward or NICU, and a time to connect with a hospice room, waiting with a family for a last breath. It's a time to kill the way we've always done this, a time to do messy church 
and a time to heal congregational conflict. A time to break down complicated scripture into life-giving words and a time to build up music and coffee hour fun. A Lent to weep and a Christmas tide of laughter. <laughs> a time after the funeral is over to mourn your own losses and one to dance at a wedding after shedding the robe. A time to help a church and a mission it has loved, and a time to encourage new visions and new ministries. A time to pass the peace with exuberance, <laughs> and a time to see the mask as a blessing. A time to seek the right word, and a time to apologize for the wrong one. A time to keep the sermon, and a Sunday morning to throw it all away and start fresh. <laughs> a time to tear up a committee agenda and a time to knit a prayer shawl. A time to keep silence and a second time to keep silence <laughs> <laughs> and some tough moments to speak up. A time to love a cantankerous deacon or moderator <laughs> and a time to hate cancer, fentanyl, suicide, and COVID. Mm. A time to fight injustice, and a time to celebrate an ONA commitment. A time to pray for peace in the church, peace in the world, peace in the hearts of these people. Mm. You have come so much to love and who love you back. Thank you, Tamarin, for helping me with that. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, so, we have a couple of gifts for you. Yay! <laughs> I like presents. There's a present in each of your cards. So while she's getting the gift, I'll tell you. So, you have uh, certificates, confirmands and all. You have certificates and you have cards. And the cards were made by Ruth Druckenmiller, um, handmade and then inscribed by Evelyn Dakota. So they were each made with hours of love for you. And inside those cards are a little gift for each of you from the church. So this is a memory box that uh, oh, wow. Renee Vader made for us. Go ahead and hold it. I'm holding it. So it is covered with fabric of scripture, uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, I am the way, thou wilt keep, trust in the Lord. And it says here, our family is like a patchwork quilt with beauty all its own, pieced together like a mosaic, mm -hmm. like playing with stained glass. And inside there oh is my. other fabric, uh, again, multiple scriptures up here. This fabric is a picture of a typical New England white church, has the dates of your staying with us. Uh, this fabric is uh, a dog fabric because <laughs> many of us have come to know Toby and love him. Uh, let's see. Music. Music. And... So it's covered with all oh, fabrics that mean wonderful. something to you. Oh, wow. Now, your first Sunday with us, you did the children's circle, and you talked about Mary Poppins. So everyone was invited <laughs> to I give, love this. give you notes. <laughs> They're all shaped in the form of Mary Poppins shapes. So we have a hat and a carpet bag. We have the carpet bag. We An have umbrella. The umbrella. A shoe. Your weird shoes. Her weird shoes. Her weird shoes. Oh, these are fabulous. And beautiful hats. Oh. So you may take time later. I will take time to read and treasure all of to these. Read all of these. And Thank you. And there's some other uh, special trinkets in there from some of our other members. Thank you so much. And then. Oh. 
I will treasure this and thank you, Renee, for making the box. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And you all then, have so much talent in this church. And then we have this um, token of appreciation. And I know this looks like a piece of paper because it is. Uh huh. But this is what is coming to you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> So. This is very generous, and I, I thank you all very, very much. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked me this week how I do this, and uh, the truth is, at this point, I rely on the grace of God and hope that there are words. And so here are the words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you. It's been really a pleasure and a privilege to have been with you these two years. I send you with love and blessings, hope and joy. And there's a benediction here someplace. I want to say one more thing. Pastor right. Lisa met with Kurt, Pastor Kurt, this week. And afterwards, he sent me an email to say, I've just met with Lisa. He said, I can't tell you how much of a blessing she is to me as an incoming pastor. And so you've taken care of not only us, but our incoming pastor. And we thank you for everything. Thank you. Dear ones, we have been richly blessed in this time. Now the winds have shifted and the Holy Spirit urges us onward. Remember that God's love for you is always supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Since you are filled with that love, go. Feed the birds and care for all the people in need. Support and nurture and bring justice. Step into God's good time, dance, dream, laugh, and live in peace. And for God's sake, go fly a kite. Let's join in singing our closing. May you run and not be weary. May your heart be filled with song, and may the love of God continue to give you hope and keep you strong, and may you run and not be weary. May your life be filled with joy, and may the road you travel always lead you home. And may you run and not be weary. May your heart be filled with song. And may the love of God continue to give you hope and keep you strong. And may the love of God be weary. May your life be filled with joy. And may the road you travel always lead you home. Ring the bells. Go in peace. Come to the parade. It's 1030. 20 minutes from now is 20 is 10 minutes of. Blessings, Lisa. Blessings, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Love you, Lisa. I miss you. God Thank you. God peace. Safe travels. Well, peace be with you adventure. always. Mm -hmm. Lucky people. Family. <laughs> <laughs>